Hey, this is Kevin. And Melissa. Welcome to Tantrum House. We're here at Kimon Expo 2019. In this video, we're going to have lots of clips of things that we're doing this weekend so you can see how much fun it is at Kimon Expo. Now, we've already picked up our program guide and it has all the cool things inside it that'll be going on for the weekend. We have special guests and events and we actually have different panels and Tantrum House. Melissa and I will be doing a few panels. Expo is known for their impressive swag bags, and we just picked up ours. Well, Kevin <laughs> picked it up. There's some stuff for Zombicide, some survivors, and the cheerleader, and also some promos for gizmos. Potion Explosion, 13 Clues, a Hero and Monster set for Massive Darkness, and some Monster promos for Rising Sun. The big item was a Song of Ice and Fire starter set with Stark versus Lannister, and then also a promo figure. It's giant gizmos. Kevin and I love to play gizmos, so what could be better than a giant version of it? And it's sitting on an awesome game topper system. What do you guys think of Gizmos? It's fun. It's I think it's good. good. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good games. The giant version. <laughs> it's steroids. Good. Gizmos on steroids. Yeah. Jonathan is giving me a little sneak peek at the prototype of Sugar Blast. How does this play? So a Sugar Blast, you need to try to connect three or more uh, sugar candies of the same type. So let me kind of show you how it works. So right here, I have a orange I can flip with this yellow to make three in a row. I would then pick up these three orange and set these aside. And because I'm sitting on this side, I would then shift the rest like that. Now, potentially I could get another blast chained, and then I would keep one of these orange for myself to complete an objective, and put the rest back in the bag and refill from the top. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm Melissa. And we have here the esteemed Eric Lang from Come On. Hello. We, we appreciate you being here. Oh, my and pleasure. Spending some time talking about uh, what's here at Come On Expo and what's coming soon from Come On Games. So we appreciate uh, what we have in front of us. This, is, this looks really interesting. We were a part of the panel this morning about, uh, make sure I say this right, Trudvang. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Trudvang, it's, it's a hard name. Yeah. Uh, internally, like we, we try to out Norse each other, so like <laughs> I, I call it Trudvang. Oh, okay. Because right? I'm like part Viking. Well, if you're not familiar, Eric uh, has done some amazing games, designed some amazing games. One of my favorites from last year, Monopoly. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do have a Monopoly on your heart in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Rising Sun is actually my favorite game from last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, 2018. I can't even keep track. Yeah. So it actually was kickstarted in 2017. All right. And right, then it right. actually was published in 2018. Yeah, it's funny. I got designer brain, right? Yeah. So like I, I worked on the game in 2015. Wow. Right? And then handed it off in 2016. So like as far as I'm concerned, the game is 2015, 2016. Right? So, <laughs> like, yes. oh, yeah, that's right. It was last year. So it was my uh, favorite game. I just love all the different mechanics and what you uh, put into the game. Um, I know the drafting mechanic, but I think one of the things Melissa really likes is the how the 
the screen. Oh, yeah, the how the battles resolve. I'm more oh. of a Euro gamer, uh -huh. and so when I first looked at it, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like this game. It looks like you're fighting people and just you, you, you know are. trying to wipe them off the map. But then I was like, oh, I can manipulate behind that screen and get points even if I don't win the battle, and I can you know strategize and, yeah. and I really did enjoy that aspect of oh, the cool, game. Oh cool, thank you. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm about that, right? Like even if you're losing, you get a little something something, right? Like, mm -hmm. And uh, in a sort of different way from Blood Rage, but broadly similar, right? Like sometimes you're just like, you know what? This battle is all about getting me resources for the next one. So <laughs> you overpay, right? <laughs> and ideally you want to win by the least amount possible. Right? Cool. So Eric, we have a very important question to ask you. This sounds like a trap. <laughs> <laughs> On Twitter. Uh, yeah, weeks, it's a trap. Weeks, <laughs> weeks ago, uh -huh. it says I vowed that by year's end to have played every one of my published games in, in public. Mm -hmm. So um, at this point, you had listed a, a yeah. bunch of them. Um, so how's that going so far? We're in um, we're in almost June. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we're almost halfway through the year. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's the update for all our people <laughs> wanting <laughs> to find out. Oh, Twitter, witness my shame. <laughs> so I did this. I, I did this really to screw myself, right? But like, I had this dream. I don't know where. So I'm going to tell you a story. A yes. lot of stories. So in December. Uh, when I, w I was, uh, I went back home uh, to Canada to visit for the holidays. I caught really bad strep throat, and I was like stuck in, uh, we were stuck in a hotel room for like three days. Oh, no. And I was like awake and had fever <laughs> dreams and stuff like that. And I was like, at some point, I'm like, you know what? I don't play. I haven't played enough of my games recently. I should do that. I'm like, but I always say it. I say that every year, but if I put it on Twitter, I'll be accountable. <laughs> Here's part and of his accountability. Here we are, right? You're my accountability buddy. So um, let's say, let us say that uh, witness my shame. I have played, I believe, four okay. on my list. So what are those? What are some of those? Uh, I played Blood Rage. Okay, I played, that's a good one. Um, I played Ancestry. Okay, I played. I'm going to be wrong about this. I, I'm almost guaranteed. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I played Secrets. Okay. Um, it's hard to like the my sense of time is so messed up. Like like November might be this year. That's but, okay. We'll count but, November as part of this year. No, we won't. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold there, them no. to it. There's a November coming though. There is November coming. I, I will play all these, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure. Well, I, mean, I know I played Dice Masters. I just don't remember if I played it in public or not. Okay. Um, oh, and I played Duelist, but that, that's hard. Okay. I haven't really played it in. So like, that's a digital game. Right? The next question is, which one or two are you really interested in doing next? Or is it pretty much any of them? Uh, it's, it's a bucket list, dude. I okay. got to do all of them. You got to do I all gotta, of them. I mean, interest-wise, I actually want to play games that I haven't played in a long, long time. Okay. Right? Which is some of the like, really older stuff and hard to get stuff. Some of them are games I don't have because they didn't survive. I have old prototypes, or not old, like old published copies that did not survive a move, or okay. that they got played so much um. they ran them ragged. So I actually have to go and rebuy them and find them. <laughs> um, like the, some of these are from like well, from like two thousand two, two thousand three. Maybe you can post what those are on Twitter, and people will get them for you. And I'm afraid too. if I post it on Twitter, like I'm just gonna end up with like. People are like, what's your address? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> boxes and boxes. No. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, it's, it, look, I, I put it up there. I'm accountable. I'm going to do it. It just, it's, I know at some point I'm going to have to like binge, right? Very cool. Hi, I'm with Justin and he's a writer with Meeple Mountain and he's going to explain foodies to us. This is a pre-production copy so there's only a few available right now and it's coming soon from Simon. So what is foodies all about? I've heard it has some similarities to uh, Machi Kuro. Yes, I've heard it described as the game we want Machi Kuro to be. So in foodies you are a manager of a food court and you are trying to attract uh, food vendors into your food court from different cultures of the world. So here's how it works. 
every turn, a start player is going to roll the dice, and they are going to activate their dice into their food court. Whatever is on their food court, they will collect. If they have built a food stall into their food court, they get to activate that space and collect a different reward than what's pre-printed on the board. So over the game, you're going to be building new stalls of these different cultures into your board. Every culture has a unique special ability, and they will trigger different bonuses for each player. Also, if you have a star that is completed and you're working to complete those throughout the game, and your number comes up, you will get to gain bonus points. The object of the game is to be the first player to reach 30 points in a four to five player game, or 20 points in a two to three player game. So it plays two to five players, um, quick, easy, keeps everyone involved the whole game. So, so when someone rolls the die, um, everyone's board will activate for that number. Yep, so if I roll the dice, Every player around will look at their board and whenever that number is, everyone gets to gain that bonus. But then as the active player, you're the only one that can then buy a new stall or you can go to one of these chefs and trigger something special up here as well. So. Well, great. This sounds like a really fun variation on that whole mechanic of everyone gets to activate on each person's turn and I'm looking forward to trying it out. Yes, Thank very, you. very much. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys, what do you guys think of foodies? So, I love engine building, and I love doing things on other people's turns. So, um, it's better than much tomorrow. Um, I probably would prefer this to space base. Um, and the spatial aspect, excellent, excellent. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a good game. Yeah. And it's because of Justin here, right? It because is. Because of Justin. It is because of Justin. Yeah, he's an excellent Justin. teacher. I, I probably would be an instructor, over. whatever he wants to be today. <laughs> Guide, I don't know. We're not hands. What is this ability? <laughs> Sorcery. All right, Jason. All right, now we see what's happening. We're playing in a All car right. race. So we're bringing it on. But I'm now. losing really bad when I should yes. be winning. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> We're still here at Come On Expo, and we have Michael, designer, full time here at Come On Games, and uh, he's going to share with us a little bit about what he's been working on. So we have Song of Ice and Fire, and you've uh, announced some things during uh, the expo. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, we had a number of uh, items that we have announced and everything for the upcoming year. Uh, we had some unit updates, but that got almost overshadowed immediately by our two. <laughs> Uh, our next uh, major release, which you talked about, which was the Baratheon faction. Okay. Uh, one of the most fan requested uh, factions we've had since the game's inception. And then we kind of topped that by surprising everyone even further because that was actually leaked a few days before the expo. <laughs> with, okay, well, we're not going to let you know anyone else trump us. And then we announced Targaryens coming out wow. as well. That's pretty amazing. So, shall, tell us a little bit about what we have here. So, I see the Savage Giants. Right, these are just a spread of some of our unit boxes from cool. our existing factions that we have. Very the cool. Starks, the Lannisters, the Very Free cool. Folk, and then also not featured here, we also have the Night's Watch. Cool. But then our two new factions with the Baratheons and the Targaryens will be joining those to bring us to uh, six full factions before the end of this year. Wow. Technically seven when we have neutral forces such as like the Boltons and some other okay. uh, mercenary style guys. And if someone's watching for the first time, tell us just a sort of overview of what is A Song of Ice and Fire, the board, tabletop miniatures game. Well, it is a table. <laughs> hey, I'm just like, I'm like reading this right here. <laughs> awesome, Kevin. <laughs> it is a uh, tabletop miniature game, rank and file. So each of these units is going to have unit trays. You're going to be moving them across the board, playing different scenarios and game modes and objectives on a 1v1 game, which you can play multiple people, but it's okay. meant to a structured 1v1, like a traditional 
tabletop war game. Cool. Picking yeah. your different factions, each one has different strengths, weaknesses, units, mm -hmm. such like there. Cool. And uh, a normal game plays, if it's a 1v1, in about how long? Depending on the scenario, I guess? It's or? actually going to be about an hour or less. That's okay. one of the things we really wow. strive for is that a lot of the traditional war games, they can go really long, you know, three, four hours in some cases. We wanted this one to be a very quick play, but still give that strategic depth because, you know, people these days, they don't have an entire day to devote to just playing a couple games. So Very cool. we wanted them to be able to get one done quickly and just go play another one. Go yeah, play that's, another one. that's very good. Thanks for sharing with us about us. this new things coming from Song of Ice and Fire. Is this going to be in retail this summer sometime? So the two new faction starters will be out before the end of the year. That's the only tentative dates okay, we can give there. Fine. And then everything else is available now. Cool. Well, let's move from here into uh, what you might also be looking forward to from Michael Bloodborne. So we're here looking at Bloodborne, which was recently on Kickstarter and did very well. And there are still late pledges available, so if what you hear interests you, go on and late pledge before that closes. Before it's too late. Yeah. Yes. So, Michael, why don't you just tell us a little bit about the game Bloodborne. So this is based on the uh, popular Bloodborne video game. Uh, this is a campaign-based game where each player is going to be playing one of the uh, hunters of Yarnum, and you're going to be going through doing a bunch of different uh, story-related missions and trying to achieve different goals. Uh, one of the big aspects of this game is that we have done our best to actually remove any type of luck element from the game because Bloodborne as a video game is all based around player skill and there's very little random things that will happen to cause you to lose. If you ever die or you fail, it's because of choices you made and because you either just weren't skilled enough or you did something wrong. And we tried to translate that into the video, uh, from the video game into the board game by removing any type of random element we can. So there's no dice, there's nothing like that. Combat is resolved by you making choices on your attacks and hopefully the results of those will you know, uh, lead to your success or failure. But we really wanted to create that bit where when things go really bad for you, and they will because this game <laughs> is very hard, you're going to be able to kind of retrace your steps back to that moment like, okay, here's where things started going downhill and if I had done this differently, this outcome would have happened and you know, you can basically see what you did wrong and learn from that. And then we've wrapped all that together in a narrative campaign-based game. So you're going to be going into, um, into here with unique different stories. The core box contains four full campaigns to play through, composed of uh, three chapters each or three games. So the idea of these campaigns is they're not going to be these long, stretched out, like multi-week things. You're going to be able to run through a campaign in probably you know a one-night session or maybe a two-day split. So we do have a, the ability for you to stop your progress and pick that up later if you want. But the idea is that you're going to get um, some... Uh, narrative uh, quick plays but with replayability because your choices through the campaign will actually affect later things that happen mm -hmm. and um, dynamically change the outcome of certain events so say you come across like a little girl do you want to help her and be a hero or just leave her there by herself well later in the campaign that might actually come up so there's some branching paths that you could take okay so if I were to play the same uh, storyline again you're saying based on my choices it would play out differently. yes okay awesome and, well, this is a come on game, so there's going to be awesome miniatures in it. I know that these are just kind of uh, prototypes, so this isn't the final version, but the, the stuff we have here is pretty impressive looking. This goat person. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm as, not familiar with all of the lore, but I'm sure people who are familiar with the video game recognize some of these. Uh, so characters. as noted here, everything is subject to change. You know, uh, before final release, the game is going to be uh, fulfilling on Kickstarter of May next year, 2020. Mm -hmm. But yes, all the miniatures here, these are the iconic enemies uh, from the video game, such as the Cleric Beast. And this goat one right here is actually Viker Amelia, one of the actual fan favorites mm -hmm. uh, there. But we've recreated all the enemies here, you know, directly from the video game, created custom hunters here with their own unique weapons and attire here but basically we've done everything we can to make everything feel in Bloodborne and then the things that are directly from the game to accurately represent them the best we can.
Well, we're back from Come On Expo, and we just wanted to close out the video with some of our thoughts. We had a great time. We did. There were, as you could see, there were so many games there being played and people enjoying themselves. We both enjoyed looking at the new games that are coming, the ones that aren't quite available yet. Mm -hmm. Foodies was yeah. a lot of fun. Sugar Blast. Yeah, I really enjoyed tipping <laughs> the uh, board on that and kind of trying to see the patterns. And the God of War card game. All three of those games will be coming straight to retail from Come On. Um, in the coming months, we're not sure exactly the street dates, but maybe Gen Con. Mm -hmm. And we also enjoyed just meeting like lots of people there and we were able to do two panels. Mm -hmm. uh, one was about uh, board game media, sort of behind the scenes, sort of lifting the curtain back, and mm -hmm. the other one's about hosting a game night. We enjoyed both of them and had a good crowd for both of them. Yeah, there was lots of interaction and talking and at them asking questions, us answering them, e even the audience uh, giving some of their thoughts and opinions, especially about hosting game nights, some of the tips and tricks that they have. So maybe you have questions for us. Ask those questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. We look forward to Come On Expo next year.